of the podcast. I'm Jenna Morton. And I'm Tosh Taylor. And today you will find us inside Corporate Canvas, but also at the Bloom Wellness Studio that's right next door. We are chatting today with Dr. Jen Sinclair. Welcome. Thank you. So you have a lot going on. Yes. <laughs> As all doctors in the province do. I think that that's, that's a given. Um, yeah. But you have a, a few extra things. So um, yes. where we're located today, we're in Riverview. What is this complex called? Um, I don't know. It doesn't really have a name. It doesn't have complex. a name. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Pinewood. We're, we're on yeah. 631 Pinewood Road okay. is the address. Okay. So um, you'll find Rehab One there. And beside Rehab One is the Riverview Family Practice, which... Uh, is your practice. Correct. Yes. And um, let's talk about how you went from that yes. uh, to, to the bloom and then to corporate canvas. Sure. Where does that yeah. all start? Great. <laughs> so uh, I'm a family doctor and I started my family practice in 2011 here in Riverview. Uh, I love family practice. I still work in family medicine as well as hospitalist medicine, but I fell in love with aesthetics. So I did some extra training in cosmetic medicine and I started doing that about 10 years ago. Um, I love connecting with patients. I love the art side of it. So it's a combination of art and medicine for me. So I started doing that out of my family practice um, just after hours, just kind of doing it for fun. And then it really started to snowball and generate traction and I needed a separate space. So then I decided to open Bloom Health and Wellness Studio right before COVID hit. Oh. <laughs> so there was this like a little, you know, slight uh, delay in that as with all new businesses. Um, but we were up and running and uh, we've been open for four years now and we continue to grow. So then I started getting involved in education. Um, I do education for family medicine as well. So I teach medical students and residents and I, I love teaching. So I decided why not teach in the aesthetics industry. So I started teaching students and I decided that I wanted a space to be able to host workshops and seminars. Um, that's really like nice, welcoming, comforting. So I started looking around and didn't really find what I was looking for. So then I decided to why not open another business? Uh, so I designed and opened Corporate Canvas Workspace where we are today. And that's how that was kind of came to fruition. And it's a beautiful space. It is very welcoming, very open, very modern. For folks who, who haven't been here or are trying to paint a picture in their heads, right. tell us a little bit more of what is in this space. Perfect. So I wanted to create a space that was um, a contained space. So when I was looking around for different options to rent like boardroom space, there was options in other buildings that was a, a room within a larger space. So you were still sharing bathroom, kitchen area, parking was an issue. So I really wanted to create a space where parking wasn't an issue. So it's accessible parking free parking, lots of parking. Um, so the feedback that I've got from the people that have rented it is they really enjoy that aspect of it. So that's worked out really well. Uh, I wanted to create a space where people could feel comfortable and connect. So where we're sitting now is in kind of like a side sitting room where you could sit, have coffee, have chat, lunch. And then we have our boardroom space, which can seat up to 14 people. And we have a large 85 inch Wi-Fi um, Screen. This, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. TV that's yeah. connected to Wi-Fi <laughs> as well as a separate kitchen area. So we have coffee, tea, water, and a separate bathroom. So all of those things are contained within this space. We know. We've looked for spaces yes. like this before <laughs> for things, and we, we know. We agree There's how hard it is to find. definitely a need for a space like this. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So if someone wanted to utilize this space, yeah. how would they go about doing so? So you can access booking online. So the website is corporatecanvas.com and you can see the availabilities and you can send a request to book. And then um, Melanie, who manages the space, will reach out to you and arrange everything else. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, I love the space and I love the chairs. Like I mm. love just like 
you're not crammed around no, the table. Like there, you have the space, the comfort. And like it's the high ceilings for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the space just feels open and welcoming and much larger than you would think the footprint is from outside. And like you say, it's so different from most of the spaces that are currently available. Yeah, thank you. Because that's what I was looking to create is something different. Uh, I think that we should also mention um, that it's a very short drive across the country. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just for Riverview people. Uh, yeah. Anybody anybody can yeah. come because you when you were looking for a space for you, you weren't just looking in Riverview. Like, no, looking I was looking yeah. everywhere, yeah. Yeah, so so by all means, uh, check out the website and get yourself a space booked in here. Uh, it is that time of year where board meetings are picking back up and we're, we're all looking for space. So uh, it's definitely worth the, the drive across the river. <laughs> and I, I did have um, somebody reach out to me. Um, I didn't initially think of use for the space like this, but somebody had mentioned hosting like a baby shower oh. or something like that. So mm. um, that would also be good use of this space too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, so your other space next yeah. door. <laughs> let's, let's talk a, a bit about Bloom because you offer yeah. a wide array of uh, aesthetics in there. Yes. Can we talk about um, what is offered? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So we, um, we offer, um, we call it neuromodulator, which means Botox is what is the word that most people can identify with. That's the brand name. Um, but technically it's neuromodulator treatment. There's different brands of that. So we offer Botox. We offer um, dermal fillers as well. We offer skin boosters. We offer, we have medical aesthetics that incorporates um, like microneedling. We have laser services, so laser hair removal, IPL, which is really good at this time of year to get rid of all the sun damage that we've generated throughout the summer, um, as well as radiofrequency microneedling. And we have massage therapy as well. I think one of the things people often question and when they think about you know medical aesthetic type things and yeah. Botox they think of it as a very very cosmetic not necessarily medical talk a little bit about the medical side of things right. and how it plays into as well in terms of you know is this something that might be covered for some people with their insurance Yes, that's a good question. So the medical indications would be migraine headaches and hyperhidrosis, which means excess sweating, like sweaty armpits. So those would be two of the common medical reasons why we use something like Botox. Um, most of the time for those two reasons, if you meet the criteria, it would be covered under your private insurance. Can you explain from a medical standpoint, <laughs> but also in layman's terms, um, how would it help with migraines, for instance? Uh, because I, I know uh, the older I get, not for me, but I know a lot yeah. of my friends as we're going through the changes of life, migraines seem to be one of the things that are coming along with it. Yeah, so for migraine headache, I mean, there's a specific criteria for migraine headaches, and we're not just talking about um, a migraine headache that you might have once a month or once, like, a couple times a month. The, the criteria for migraine headache treatment with Botox is you have to have at least 15 migraines per month. So, you know, we're really talking about those people who are really debilitated by their migraine headaches and have tried all other things um, before this. So uh, there is specific criteria for that, but how it works is it relaxes muscles. So just like we use Botox in the face to relax the muscles of facial expression, we would use it in the muscles that create tension that would trigger a migraine. So like the back of the head, the neck, the shoulders, the temples. Interesting. Okay. And then same would work for sweat glands, I suppose. In sweat glands, we're not injecting muscles. So we're injecting Botox just under the surface of the skin, and that prevents sweat production. <laughs> so many things. <laughs> yeah. Talk a little bit more about the joy that you get from this work. Yeah, so I went into medicine initially because I liked connecting with people. And so I bring that through everything that I do in medicine, including my work here at Bloom. So 
I love connecting with people. Everybody comes to me for a different reason. Everybody has a different goal. Everybody has a different story. Everybody's skin is different. So I love being able to chat with people and to get a really good idea of, you know, what it is they might be looking for. And we think of medical aesthetics and sometimes we get a little bit nervous because we think of what we see on social media or we think like these big lips or big apple cheeks. And that's not really my jam. Like I, <laughs> I love to just enhance people's natural features and natural beauty. And sometimes people just want a little bit of a fresh glow to their face, right? It's just, just something that they'll notice and nobody else would look at them and say, whoa, like, what did you do? <laughs> like, that's, that's not what we're going for. Yeah. So that's what I love about it is just being able to give people a little bit of confidence and, and connect with them along the way. There is also a, a, a major difference between where you go to get your Botox done um, because it really is watched, right, through um, how, like how you get your Botox and what companies you buy from. Right. Um, there's a lot of, of mandates and, and rules around it. Yeah. Um, that maybe someone in their basement isn't following the right <laughs> rules. Like you do actually have to be a medical doctor to get the correct stuff. Am I right about that? Yes. Yeah, so Botox is a prescription medication. So you need to be able to prescribe that medication. And in New Brunswick, that means you have to be a medical doctor or a nurse practitioner. Okay. <laughs> I just, I just say like, it, yeah, I just want to make sure that that's very pointed out because those people that we do see on social media that might have, you know, the big right. apple cheeks, like you were saying, or whatever, right. watch where you're going and, and make sure that the person that's injecting it is well-trained as well. Yeah. Well, and when it comes to social media, a lot of what you might see is not necessarily local. Mm -hmm. You know, people operate on, in different jurisdictions under different yes. rules. And I think it's very comforting to know what standards we have mm -hmm. here in New Brunswick and in Canada. It can be the Wild West in some other some areas of uh of canada and, and and for other places in the world too that they don't have the same legislation that we do you don't have to be a medical doctor or a nurse practitioner to inject it you can be a registered nurse or an lpn a licensed practical nurse but you do have to have a medical director so if you're not a physician or a nurse practitioner you need to have a medical director who's who oversees that and so they would be responsible for overseeing what you're doing, making sure that it's, you know, it's a prescribed medication so that the right amounts are being used. If you're a first time, like you're just someone who has decided it's time for a change, but yeah. I don't know what, it, like, do I want Botox? Do I want laser? Do I, you know, want yeah. microdermabrasion, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's their first step when they come into room? So that's a really good question because a lot of the times what people think that they need or want is not actually what we end up recommending. So it's all about education. So if you come to me, um, I would have people that come to me and they would say, I want, I don't know, cheek filler or under eye filler or something. But when you really dive into what it is that they're looking for and what their goals are, Maybe it's not filler at all. Maybe it's not Botox at all. Maybe they just want to look brighter. Maybe their skin wants to look brighter. And then we talk about different ways we can do that through maybe it's skincare, maybe it's laser. And so I think it's a, it's a good opportunity when you come for a consultation and we go through everything. We take your pictures. We put it up on a big screen. People don't like that. They don't <laughs> like to see themselves on the screen, but it's really important to have that conversation and to be able to look at their face together to say, here's what, you know, I let them point at what they see first mm -hmm. and they'll tell me, here's what I don't like, here's what bothers me. And then we talk about it together and generate a plan together based on their goals. I'm wondering what kind of percentage breakdown you have in your clientele that come into bloom because I think a lot of people mm -hmm. associate this kind of treatment yes. with females of a certain age. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that's actually accurate. Are you thinking that it would be more attractive to younger women? Is that? I'm curious, mm -hmm. is it is it yeah. younger women who are coming in driven by social media trends? Is it older women coming in driven by age? Is it mostly women? 
It, we have all ages. Uh, I would say yes, it's mostly women, but I do treat men as well. And I think we um, can't forget about the, the men that come here. But we get women of all ages. In my experience, it depends on the age that they are, their goals will be different. And so I get actually a lot of the kind of 50 plus crowd and the older women um, that come to me because, I don't know, I don't know why, but, um, and we have different conversations, right? As we age, our hormones change, you know, we're in perimenopause and menopause, and then it's just this like tidal shift of hormone and we forget that our skin changes too. And so when our skin changes, we have different considerations. So the consultation process is different depending on your age, even though maybe your goals are the same. So I could have a 20 year old woman and a 50 year old woman, and maybe both of them, their goal is to have healthier skin. My approach might be a little bit different to those two, but in general, the older, I say older, they're not older, <laughs> the more mature women, yeah. <laughs> it's just will, you know, yeah. their goals tend to be a, a little bit different. So they're looking for, you know, they've had years of sun damage. So a big concern is sun damage, age, age spots pigmentation. They just want to look a little bit fresher, a little bit brighter. And I would say in my experience, the younger generation are more driven by social media trends and they want the lips and they want, you know, a different goal, which is okay too. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, but we do have all ages, but goals tend to be a little bit different. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. It's just, it's interesting to, to hear what the reality is versus what People's, people's perceptions might be yes. of who is coming and what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, very shortly, uh, I will speaking be of what people are looking for, <laughs> 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 I haven't so much in my life sat in a mirror and gone like this, trying to like pick my skin back up. It's unbelievable. And I remember my mom doing that, and I was like, "Like you look great. What's wrong with you?" And now I look in the mirror and I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> Well, it's my mom's face. And it, yeah. it's, it's funny you yes. should you should do that because I will say this: um, there are some limitations that we have to what we can do. And so when somebody comes in and says, "I want this," <laughs> I say, "I think I need to refer you to one of my plastic surgery colleagues." Right? So there's realistic expectations, and that's an important conversation to have with people as well. Yeah. Right? So when I see this, this is the. <laughs> The sign that maybe, you know, maybe they're not in the right spot and, and I'm happy to refer them out. Okay, excellent. I think another important thing to think about too is it's not like one price fits all either. Um, you don't have like a certain price package. It's going to be depending per patient and how much you need. Yeah. Because um, I, I know that was an issue of mine. When I, when I first started looking into it, I was like, listen, how much, how much to fix the face? <laughs> Uh, but speaking of that, so we are in, mm -hmm. in celebration of Halloween yes. this week. We are going to be doing a vampire facial. <gasps> so, <laughs> can you tell us uh, as, as we get started here, um, what am I about to do? Okay. <laughs> right. I'm really excited. So yes, in the spirit of Halloween, we're doing a vampire facial. So this is something that you might see on social media. It's a bit of a social media trend. Well, it totally so. is because when I explained where I was coming and what I was talking about today, and I was trying to explain it to my husband and my children, I was like, yeah, and Tasha's going to get this thing in her face. And I, and my 13 year old went, oh, a vampire facial. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is what I'm explaining. <laughs> So she's very invested to find oh, out good. how this goes. Okay, good. I'll let you know there. Awesome. 13 years old. Good. Yeah. It's going to be good. So it's a combination of a microneedling treatment um, and the part, the vampire part, is we take your blood. Uh -huh. We have a centrifuge which spins your blood and separates um, your blood so that we get your plasma. And your plasma will look like um, like a honey color, so platelet-rich plasma. And the thought is is that the plasma is full of um, growth factors and things that can stimulate healing. So with the microneedling, we're creating little minor injuries to your skin, and then we're using your plasma to help you heal. Okay. 
All right, let's okay. go injure Tasha's face. <laughs> <laughs> let's make me look <laughs> Maybe work on some of that sun damage because I am a sun worshiper. Yeah. <laughs> How soon do you see the results? Like, it, when will Tasha's face look different? <laughs> when does she turn into the vampire? So, uh, with these types of treatments, it, you do need more than one. So, typically a series of three, but you will feel a little bit tighter uh, today and you might be a little bit red. So, that sometimes will uh, take a couple days to go away, but I'm sure. Oh, yeah, the ginger it, yeah. It won't, won't go red at all. Fine. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Right? It's a good thing I don't have any plans for the rest of the day. Because <laughs> I know what it looks like when I get my eyebrows waxed. So that is something. Uh, okay, so we are gonna go and get some footage of that happening. Uh, but in the meantime, Jen, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you so much. And for people who want to follow up with you and find out more about your practice, about Bloom, about the corporate center, how can they find? You? So website, corporatecanvasworkspace.com, and Bloom is Bloom Health and Wellness Studio. So bloomhealthstudio.com.